it's uh, February 17, 2016, and today I want to talk about lying. Um, lying, you know, um, you know what the Bible says about lying, you know, fibs, bluffs, white lies, half-truths, dishonesty, um, lying by omission. Um, all these things have uh, infiltrated our lives and have become the norm. But how does God really feel about this? Um, this is something we need to examine in ourselves. If we call ourselves saved and we continue to do these things um, without realizing that we're sinning, then we could be in trouble. So um, I did some digging and um, I want to talk about this. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's continue here. All right, there's a plague that is grieving the heart of God because it is preventable and it can be stopped. It has spread among all churches and is particularly rampant in society. Even God's ministries are not immune, and many of them are infected with it. Um, what is this evil plague? You may be surprised. It appears rather harmless at first glance. It is now so commonplace that people are deceived into just accepting it as normal instead of recognizing and resisting it. This epidemic is the practice of lying and dishonesty. Um, what, is the Bible, what is it that the Bible says about lying? Well, a lying tongue is not only something God hates, it is also something that is an abomination to him. In Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deceiveth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So you see, you know, something that um, we all do unconsciously, um, God, God despises it. So this is something that we have to examine now in ourselves. Uh, dishonesty is rampant. As the moral climate of our society has been deteriorating, lying has become a major problem. The businesses, uh, the business world is particularly plagued by this problem. Men's dishonesty with each other, meetings, forgotten, company theft, promises not kept, contracts broken, etc. Lawyers are increasing, uh, increased in numbers over the last decade, mainly because of irresponsibility and broken contracts among men due to lying. A news organization recent, recently did a survey here in America and asked people several questions to determine the percentage of people who lied or were dishonest about things. Some of the questions were, do you cheat on your income tax? Do you compliment people when you really don't mean it? Do you tell your spouse to tell callers you are not home when you are there? Do you tell little white lies if it will keep you out of trouble? Do you tell creditors that the check is in the mail when you have not mailed it? Do you exaggerate in repeating things you have heard? The results of this survey determined that nearly 80% of Americans are not truthful under certain circumstances. This is understandable when we look at the morals of our society, but what about Christians? Have they fallen into the habit of lying also? <laughs> also, what constitutes a lie according to the Bible? Anything that is not the truth is a lie. And God's word in the Bible tells us what is truth. The Bible is the standard or measuring rod we must use in determining truth. Sadly, Christians are also succumbing to this epidemic of lying. Lying to each other 
has now become so commonplace, Christians too have become liars. Uh, <laughs> the father of lies. Have you been lied to lately? Was it another Christian that lied to you? A minister, perhaps. Each of us have had our trust in people undermined or in some cases even destroyed because of lies. We would all agree that lying is an ugly evil. The Bible tells us that lying began with the devil and that he is the father of lies. In John 8, 43 and 47, it says, Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are your, of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you con convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Okay, so people that know that the truth, know the truth, understand that lying comes from the devil, are the seed of God. And those that lie and swear to it and will not repent of it are from the seed of Satan. Plain and simple. The Bible is filled with abominations against being dishonest and lying. One of the Ten Commandments states, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Exodus 20.16 Before we point our finger at another for being a liar, <laughs> that we feel God needs to deal with, let us examine our own lives to see if we are infected with the same disease. What kind of witness are we to those around us? Are we deceived and have we become liars ourselves? Let us first give a definition as to what a lie is according to the Webster's Dictionary. To make a statement that one knows is false, especially with the intent to deceive, to give false impression or action or false statement, especially with the intent to deceive. To make false statement in order to evade the truth. To uh, the invention of a false story or excuse in order to deceive. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Perhaps for a Christian, a biblical definition of lying could be summed up in this statement. Anytime my word does not agree with God's word. In Numbers 23, 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall not he do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? When we do not keep our word, we are guilty of lying. Over the last year, I have lost track of the number of times Christians have failed to keep their word to me. I am not angry or resentful or bitter over this, as the Lord has worked those attitudes out of my life. I have learned to take every offense to him in prayer, and he that removes any personal ill I might have, and he gives me a forgiving and gracious attitude towards others. However, since I began to notice how many of God's people were not keeping their word, I received the prayer burden of intercession for this evil to be removed from God's people. I first began praying about my own life and asked God to expose any areas where I might be guilty of sin. I have tried to obey Romans 12, 17, 21, which says, Recompense to no man for evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Most of the time, I would just forgive these lying offenses and would just pray for them and try to live peacefully with all men. However, in prayer, 
the Lord spoke to my heart that I must go one step further and speak the truth in love to my brothers and sisters if I truly love them. Ephesians 4, 15, 16 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is in the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body uh, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. If we, as the body of Christ, are to mature and grow up, we must conform to the truth which is Jesus. The devil is behind every lie, and as Christians we are admonished not to lie to one another. Colossians 3, 9, 10 says, Lie not to one another seeing that ye have put off old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, little white lies. Let us look at some specific way the devil gets us to lie. We will expose some of his devices. These sorts of lies are being practiced by many Christians. Now remember, we are guilty of lying when we do not keep our word. Even if these sorts of lies seem harmless and don't appear to really hurt anyone else, they are harmful to our own souls. The more we practice telling untruths of any kinds, the duller our conscience becomes. Okay, uh, if you say, I'll call you back tomorrow. Okay, this excuse is often used with a deliberate attempt to deceive. The person does not call back at the appointed time and will call back at a much later date with excuses of why they were unable to call, which usually goes something like, well, I was too busy or I meant to call, but I didn't get around to it. We all have been guilty of this, but we need to realize when we say we will do something, we need to keep our word. We do understand that there are legitimate reasons that make it impossible at times to keep our word. This is not the case we are referring to here. It would be better not to make this promise or to say, I'll call you back tomorrow. Another one is, I'll be happy to do that for you. Whatever promise was made, it was not kept, and their word about the matter causes them not to be trusted. The Holy Spirit is trying to purge this lack from his people and is using a group of men known as promise keepers to help restore trustworthiness back in the heads, heads of families by stressing that they need to keep their promises. Okay, I like that. Are you a promise keeper? <laughs> we could list numerous examples, but these two cover a lot of territory. Anytime we say the words, I will, we need to be responsible to do it. We all, on occasion, fail to do the things we have good intentions of doing, or we are hindered in some way and can't do them. You know, every time you get on the video, you get an itch. Does that happen to you? However, <laughs> if we are unable to keep an appointment, we should be thoughtful enough to call and cancel or tell our delayed re arrival. We are living in an age when there are so many uncaring attitudes expressed. As Christians, we can be good witnesses by being different. Okay, uh, so that's about it. And, um, you know, I just covered a few. There's so many ways. Lying by omission is a big one when you leave things out and you know that you shouldn't leave something out. That's what that is, lying by omission. So let's just say a little prayer to the Father, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh, dear Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Uh, and we sin when we don't know that we sin. So we, we bring our unconscious lying father and some lies that we know that we did before you. We put it at the foot of the cross, Father, and ask you now to forgive us of all the times that we lied, that we knew that we lied, and the times that we lied and we 
were unaware of it. So we, we give it to you, Father. We want you to cleanse us and purify us and purge us of this um, carbon monoxide sin that we do. And uh, we ask you to give us strength, Father, and awareness. We pray for awareness that we may be caught in our tracks when uh, deceiving uh, flows from our lips. May you make us aware and may we uh, repent it immediately unto you to be cleansed. Holy Father, we come to you. We are sinners. Even when we are saved, we still continue to sin. But it is through our salvation with you and our desire to please you, Lord, that we keep bringing them forward for um, to be cleansed in your sight. Holy Father, please, we believe, we believe that you died on the cross for our sins and that you paid the ransom and the price for us. And we accept you, Father. We accept your sacrifice as payment for our sins. We confess that we're sinners. We believe in what you did on the cross and that you died on the cross and that you rose again on the third day. Father, we come to you. We ask for salvation. Please save us, Father. We want to pick up our cross and we want to follow you. Today and forever, we go your way. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. In the name of Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. And um, if you prayed that, and you meant that, um, I want to send you a little track for free that says, um, Are You Born Again? Uh, and also, I have a limited supply. By the way, this is incense. I don't smoke. I have a limited supply, so only if you absolutely can't afford it or need a Bible, I'll send you one. Okay? And... Um, I pay for this out of my own pocket. I will also pay for the shipping, but please be serious. Uh, <laughs> okay, but I will send one to you. Just um, email me your request uh, to Judith Carlone at gmail.com. May you all be blessed. May God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, our Heavenly Father. Okay. And uh, on that note, I'll be back again with another message. Shalom. Oh.